In this chapter, you applied QDAP's polarity function a few times to get a quick positive or negative assessment. It turns out this function is more complex than you may think. First, there is a built-in subjectivity lexicon. This standard lexicon comes from two researchers from the University of Illinois at Chicago. It contains almost 7,000 words marked as positive or negative. In this chapter, you will learn how to change the lexicon, but let's first examine how it works without adding words. When you apply the polarity function to text, the function identifies words from the subjectivity lexicon. Once the polarized words are tagged, the function creates a context cluster around the term. In this example, the lexicon contains good, and it is found in the text. By default, a context cluster includes the four words before and two words after the identified word. So removing stop words will impact the polarity scores because it affects the words in the cluster. Next, each of the individual words is classified as polarized, neutral, negator, amplifier, or deamplifier. The identified words from the lexicon are the polarized words. In this case, good. A neutral word has no impact on the context cluster's polarity, but does affect the word count, which is important later. In this cluster, there are seven neutral terms like learning and stop words. Amplifiers and deamplifiers are considered valence shifters. Valence shifters add or subtract to the author's intent. An example amplifier is very, as in Ted's voice is very nice. The amplifier positively affects the niceness of my voice. Lastly, a negator switches the polarity of the cluster, as in Ted's voice is not very nice. The amplified very and positivity of nice are now switched completely to not being nice at all. As a quick review, here are the terms we covered. Once polarity has created a context cluster, it classifies terms into each of these types, polarized, neutral, negators, and valence shifters. As you may expect, a positive word has a value of one, a negative term has a value of negative one. This context cluster does not have a negation, so we don't have to switch any values. In the polarity function, an amplifier like very is valued at 0.8, while D amplifiers receive a negative 0.8. In the end, all the polarity values are summed. Keep in mind, we didn't remove any stop words, so the entire passage has nine terms. The word good counts as one. An amplifier very adds another 0.8. So, the polarity is 1.8 with a total word count of 9. Then, 1.8 is divided by the square root of 9. Thus, 1.8 divided by 3, so that the polarity score is 0.6. Dividing by the square root of the total number of words accounts for the polarity term density. The thought being that densely packed polarized words, negators, and valence shifters engender stronger polarity feelings. Now that you know how the polarity function works, you will close out this chapter applying it and adjusting the subjectivity lexicon to fit your particular text. This is important for polarity analysis. For example, in the Twitter sphere, using terms like LOL for laugh out loud should be added as positive words in the lexicon. Without these channel-specific terms, your analysis may completely miss important context clusters. Remember the next chapters will introduce the tidy text package, visuals, and then a practical application of sentiment analysis using property rental reviews. Enjoy the exercises!